I'm Julie Bryant from Naked Dragon and I'm here this evening with Mike George. Hello. Welcome Mike. Thank you. Um, I had the great pleasure of meeting Mike originally, I think it was about 10 years ago, was it something like that? Yeah, it could be. Been. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I've been fascinated with, uh, with Mike's journey uh, ever since actually, so it's a great honour to have Mike here this evening with us. I've been really looking forward to this evening. My pleasure. Thank you for, oh. for inviting me to okay. come at long last. It's lovely to have you here, Mike. And um, the subject we're talking about tonight is one that's very close, I think, probably to most of our hearts, mm. and that's the, the subject of love. Mm. It's uh, a very small word, word with a mm. very mm. large meaning. A lot of baggage. With a lot of baggage mm. attached mm. for many, many people. Mm. So, um, how would you simplify the subject to coincide with the simplification of such a short word? If you had to sum it up in a paragraph, how would you sum up the whole subject? Oh, I think uh, in, in the context of people's personal lives, it's what everyone's searching for. Uh, but unfortunately, the vast majority, probably 99.99% .99 of people, look in the wrong direction mm -hmm. um, for the, uh, the, the great uh, reward that uh, people seek in their relationships in life which is called love. And what do you think, if you remove the word love mm. from what they're searching for, mm. what is it that you believe that they are actually searching mm. for? All, all search, ultimately, doesn't matter what you're looking for, always comes back to the original cause, which is for the self, for the I, for the me. I'm really searching uh, to know me, to be me, in fact. So are you saying that you're searching to see me, so, so I'd be searching to see myself reflected by you yes. in that respect? Not so much to see, but just to be myself, in mm -hmm. other words, to know my own beauty, to know my own perfection, to know my own fullness. You know, we, we use the world around us uh, and we even say you have to go out and be your best, discover your potential, find fulfillment in your life. Mm -hmm. But actually we're already full. Uh, we're already filled, we're already okay as we are within. But um, our thinking takes us away from ourselves. And if you notice when you search, you're always thinking about something outside of yourself. And so that's what disturbs our inner peace. Because our true underlying nature is just peacefulness. And when we're in that state of peace, when the thoughts have gone quiet and the mind is still, that's when we begin to know ourselves as we are. Not a knowledge as an information, as in something that can be said, but a knowingness mm -hmm. of our completeness, our fullness, our beingness. And, and, and when we're in that state, then the energy that we radiate, because human consciousness, the self, is designed to radiate mm -hmm. outwards, then the vibration of that energy uh, is at its highest, its purest, its most powerful. And that's the vibration that we call love. So that's the vibration that we're all looking to, to achieve in our life. Yes. And to get to that vibration. So once, once we are resonating at that high vibration, mm. where does relationship come into play mm. with that? So mm. we're all, we've all raised our vibration. Mm. Yeah. We've all achieved this sense of self, mm. of who we are. So mm. we're not looking to another. Mm -hmm to help us to achieve mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So once we've reached that state mm -hmm. and we're pretty self-actualized, where does relationship then come into our lives? Well, relationship is a, a function of uh, the self, the soul, occupying physical form. And uh, as soon as we occupy a physical form, we very quickly begin to identify with the form. Mm -hmm. We believe we are just form. Yeah. And that's the ultimate limitation of consciousness. And so when uh, we have realized, become enlightened, know ourselves as we truly are, which is the spiritual entity mm -hmm. in the form, yeah. then we also notice that our purpose here is to play. Yeah? We come into the material world, the playground of life, we're here to play. And playfulness and creativity, they're like that. They're the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're words to describe the same thing. Some people call it the manifestation of the energy of consciousness through matter, mm -hmm. different ways to say it. And so when I realize that, then I notice that actually to play, we need other entities, other people. Playmates. And so playmates <laughs> arises, yeah. 
And so that's uh, the primary purpose of our life, is to create our life and to co-create life with others. So that's why, in a sense, um, uh, um, we don't uh, 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 need each other. Well, sorry, we do need each other, but we're not needy of each other. Mm. And so it's, uh, as soon as I start thinking I need someone, then that means I'm searching, that means I've lost my true sense of self and I'm getting needy. Mm -hmm. And there's tension, there's peacelessness, my vibration is coming down, mm -hmm. and so love is lost. Mm -hmm. Temporarily, because it can never be totally lost. Mm -hmm. But that vibration is sabotaged. And that's because I think it's just about me and another person, or this group of people, or this group of people that, oh, they're more important than them, and I can get something from them, it'll make me happy, yeah. and I start yeah. consuming the world yeah. around me. And that means I'm lost, basically. Yeah. And it's not easy to see all that, because that's how the paradigm of life mm. has, has, has evolved so far. Mm -hmm. So we are here to, to play our role within the playground. Yes. So going off yeah. and sitting in a cave yeah. for 60 years, contemplating our spirituality is not really the answer. Not really, no. <laughs> I mean, for six weeks or six months it has its place, yeah. because it might be useful to do that, to, to begin to the process of realizing that actually the universe that I need to be most interested in first is the universe of my consciousness. Not in a narcissistic way mm. or a self-obsessive way, but in a way that I get to know, you know who I really am, what's really going on, how I work, how I create, how these thoughts emerge and where they're coming from. There has to be that kind of period in everybody's process of reawakening to who they really are as mm. spiritual beings. There has to be that time. Not 60 years, that's a little bit too much, that's more like avoidance than, <laughs> than, than actually meeting myself again. But, but some period, and this is why the whole idea of a retreat becomes so essential, especially in our culture. Mm. Fast, busy, busy, doing, doing, addicted to consuming the world. And so a retreat gives you the opportunity just to push the pause button yes. and just look in the mirror of your experience, uh, look in the mirror of someone else who's on that journey, look in the mirror of your meditation mm -hmm. and begin to reawaken what's really the heart, the, the self, the true self. Mm -hmm. The heart and the self are the same thing. To reawaken that and come to know it and be comfortable in it mm -hmm. again. It's very special to have that, as you say, that time away from your everyday yeah, yeah, life and the quite, demands. Quite it's essential, so really. It's a gift yeah. and an honouring of oneself, yeah, really, to be able to, to, ex to explore those, mm. those areas. Mm. So, Mike, if I can just bring you sort of mm. back to your, your book, mm. um, Seven Myths of Love, mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. which course is a fantastic name. We're playing, we're playing. We are playing, words, we're yeah. playing and yeah. in fact that's just what I was going to ask you because you talk in the book about the dance and the sort of seven veils. Yeah. So dance and play and movement, mm. does that mm. all go mm. together for you? Yeah, ultimately yeah. it does. When consciousness is free of its habitual patterns, the illusions and beliefs that were taught in our formal educations, the, when we're free of our neediness and, and, and our desires for something from the world around mm -hmm. us, then inside there's a freedom that, that is re-emerging. And that freedom is like a child's innocence. It's mm -hmm. playful and it, it interacts with others in a light way. Yeah. It doesn't take anything seriously. You, know, and there's, you don't try and force anything. You don't want anything. And so there's a naturalness that is restored yes. to, to our consciousness, really. Which is a beautiful yeah. place yeah. to be. Yeah. And I think if, if we're all fortunate enough to be able to touch that place mm. and hold it and mm. develop it, what a beautiful place to be. Sometimes the mistake is trying to hold it. You know, we, we right. taste it sometimes. Okay. Oh, that was a wonderful experience. Oh, I felt so good. And then we try and grasp it. And, uh, and it becomes a memory. And we try and repeat it. And, and of course, it takes a little while to realize that's a bit of a mistake mm. because uh, I'm actually um, getting attached to yes, that's true. I'm to attach the to thrill yes. of that, yes, that, that that's true. experience. Yes. And so it's impossible to repeat an experience. You can't hold on to anything that's authentically emerging mm. in your consciousness. And so there comes a moment when you realize that and then you begin to live the reality of life in which Every single moment is unique, can never be repeated, and you meet each scene 
as it comes in that way. So it's quite a balance then really between being the witness and the observer and yeah. actually the experience. 